The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter nor the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You fool, will be liable to the fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar and go first and be reconciled with your brother. And then, come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, Do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, For you cannot make a single hair, white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Dr. Oliver Sacks was a world-famous neurologist who dedicated his life work studying the human brain. The author of many books, one of which was called Awakenings, inspired a movie by the same name. In that film, Robin Williams portrayed a caring physician who worked extensively with catatonic patients. So much of Dr. Sack's writings animated how he dealt with each patient's unique experience. One of his patients, Jimmy, had been discharged from the Navy at the end of World War II. Jimmy lived alone, and drifted from job to job, and for over 20 years drank himself into amnesia, leaving Jimmy unable to remember anything about his life after 1945. For the next 10 years, Jimmy became another statistic that bounced in and out of the mental health care system. Then in 1965, Jimmy was placed in a clinic under the care 
of Dr. Oliver Sacks. According to the doctor, Jimmy was so disabled that he could not even manage the simple rules that are fundamental in everyday life. Jimmy walked the corridors, fretful and restless, uneasy and bored. Dr. Sachs believed that Jimmy wanted to accomplish things in his life, to have a purpose in his life, yet he functioned like a man without a soul. Dr. Sachs asked the nuns who worked at the clinic if they had ever seen Jimmy exhibit even a trace of normality. And their response, why don't you observe Jimmy during the Mass? Dr. Sachs agreed to the request and he was deeply moved by the reverence Jimmy showed in his focused attention, how he knelt and received the Eucharist with great humility on his tongue. Seeing this dramatic transformation, Dr. Sachs recognized Jimmy's intimacy and totality of communion. During the Mass, Jimmy was no longer at the mercy of a faulty memory. Rather, he was entirely absorbed in his whole being as he worshipped God. With renewed passion for Jimmy's case, Dr. Sachs reported that God's grace and the human spirit can do what medicine and science cannot. Jimmy was much more than his limitations. In his sensibility, his feeling, his will, his moral core, the Holy Mass enabled Jimmy to reclaim his humanity. Jimmy's story also points to another reality that is presented to us within today's gospel. Rules are useful signposts because they help us to address the deeper issues of life. It is not so much about murder as it is about living in right relationship with God and one another. It is not so much about adultery as it is about respecting the covenant love of family. It is not so much about an eye for an eye or lying or cheating our way to the top as it is to walk humbly with our God and allow his love and grace to guide us in the daily decisions we face throughout life's journey. Jimmy's story also draws our attention to the spiritual insight that St. Paul expressed in today's second reading. We speak of God's wisdom, mysterious and hidden, what eye has not seen, and what ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. If we accept the challenge to follow God's rules in our lives, if we look for the beauty of God's creation, if we look to the dignity of every human life, then the rules that shape our lives, especially the rules of our faith, will continuously grow and expand our relationship with God and our neighbor. And so today, as we reflect on the rules Jesus spoke about in today's gospel, may we consider a few thoughts for personal reflection. Think about the rules that we live by on a daily basis and how they have a positive or negative impact on our relationship with God and each other. Do we have a willing spirit to extend ourselves to address the needs of the poor, the vulnerable, and the forgotten members of our society? Or are we judgmental, quick to use that gospel word, raka, by insulting and degrading other people who do not agree with our views or measure up to our standards? This is the gospel challenge we face today. Are we willing to adjust our thinking and live according to God's rules rather than simply judging the jimmies that we meet in life.